Hey, uh, what's up everybody? It's Terry, VE3NSV, and uh, I'm just going to do this quick uh, tutorial on how to set up a fire paging system that will um, email all your fire pages to your smartphone. I've been uh, doing this for almost two years now. Actually, it's probably going to be two years, and uh, I thought I'd uh, share it with you guys. Um, so if you're wondering what it does, um, I've got a receiver hooked up to the computer, um, just a cheap conventional scanner, connected via a three and a half millimeter for you Canadians or an eighth inch for you Americans uh, uh, cable, and uh, the receiver decodes the uh, fire tones and then will record the 30 seconds of the audio and then uh, email that out. And uh, it sounds a little something like this. Alarm for Baden, alarm for Baden, tier response for seizure, 93 Goldschmidt Crescent, alarm for Baden, alarm for Baden, tier response for a seizure, 93 Goldschmidt Crescent. Alarm for Mary Hill, alarm for Mary Hill, report of a power line down at 1025 Mary Hill Road, that's alarm for Mary Hill, for a power line down in front of Haley's Farm. 1025 Mary Hill Road. Okay, so um, what you're going to need once again is a, uh, a conventional scanner, just a cheap scanner. Pick one up from a ham fest, 15 bucks. Set it to your local uh, fire paging frequency. Hook it into your computer with a uh, with a stereo cable, and uh, set your uh, record properties to record from either the microphone or the line in depending on what you've got it hooked into um, and set your audio levels I've got one uh, set up here now I'm just using my home patrol for the sake of testing but you can hear it Simum, Les conditions meteorologiques at 10 heures. Kitchener, Waterloo. Ciel couvert. All right, so uh, for the sake of testing, that's uh, I got some good audio going there. So I always use the Weather Channel for audio. It's uh, continuous audio and uh, set the level real good. And then you're going to uh, want to uh, set up the software, which uh, is uh, pretty easy to do. So you're going to want to go over to the uh, radio reference forms. And um, inside the radio reference forms, you're going to search two-tone detect, or I'll put the link in the description box below. And uh, in that two-tone uh, thread, you'll find a link to uh, Andy's uh, SourceForge page. Um, so you want to go there and uh, and uh, download the software. So the SourceForge page is here. The current version right now is uh, version 49, but uh, obviously you're going to want to download the uh, the latest version. So uh, when you download the latest version, you're going to uh, get this two-tone detect folder right here and um, you're going to want to read the readme we'll uh, word wrap this so we can read it and go ahead and read it the only thing that I'm going to uh, get into right now is uh, this right here you're going to have to download this codec in order for the software to work so you're just going to copy that link right there go back into your browser paste that in and you're going to need to download that. You're going to save that somewhere and you're going to need to extract it. It's in the 7 zip format so you're going to have to extract that back into that two-tone detect folder. If you don't the software won't work. As you can see I've extracted it there. The FFmpeg it needs to be in this folder or the software will not work. All right, so once you've got that uh, FFmpeg in there, you're going to uh, want to open up this tones configuration file. Uh, it's got some sample tone configuration files here. Uh, just kind of shows you how to set it up. Yeah, but uh, you don't want to uh, do anything with the samples. It's not going to affect the software at all. So uh, you're going to want to look at the tones configuration uh, file. And I've gone ahead and... Uh, done one here. You want to make sure word wrap is off when you're doing any type of uh, configuration file like this uh, or you could uh, stand to mess something up. 
So we've got uh, tone one, tone two, tone three. These would uh, signify uh, different fire departments. Uh, so tone one I've set up as the Breslau Fire Department for the sake of testing. Their uh, tone would be uh, 349 hertz for the A tone, uh, 707.3 for the B tone. So uh, this is uh, two-tone paging. Uh, normally two-tone paging, the A tone is going to be one second long. The B tone is going to be three seconds long. So um, in the software, it uh, listens for the A tone. Once it uh, hears the A tone, it listens for the B tone. As long as it hears uh, a certain duration of the B tone, it's going to, uh, to think it's a valid uh, fire page and it's going to start recording. The B tone length, uh, Andy has specified he wants it uh, there. He, it should set it to 0.6. I've set mine to 0.8. The B tone length in reality is uh, three seconds, so I would think anything under three seconds sh should uh, trigger the software uh, just fine. But uh, you can play with this. Uh, I've had no falsing or uh, no missed pages, so I would try. I would set it at point eight, leave it alone. The description. This is what's going to show up in the uh, subject line of the email. So uh, I've just set it as the Breslau Fire Department. Uh, the email address is uh, pretty straightforward, mp3 email. Any uh, email addresses in this field will uh, get the uh, email with the attachment. You can put as many as you like, just separate them with a comma. Uh, the AMR email is uh, if anybody has a cell phone that accepts the AMR uh, attachment, uh, you could uh, put their uh, email to text uh, address in here. My uh, email to text uh, with my provider would be at pcs.rogers.com. I'll provide a link in the, d the description below on uh, gateways uh, for the different providers. And same thing, you can add as many uh, email addresses as you want. Uh, if you've got a smartphone like an iPhone, Blackberry, or Android, the MP3 address would be sufficient, or you can do the AMR. I think all, uh, all the devices are compatible on both. The MP3 will be a little higher, higher quality. And you would follow that through for the next tone. I've set up another department, Baden Fire Department, same thing, set up their tones. Let's um, left length the same, Baden Fire in the subject line, uh, email addresses, AMR address. Uh, you can also set up an exclude. If you wanted to exclude emails from a certain duration for a certain department, you can set that up here. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you didn't want to hear from a department between 8 o'clock and 18.05, just put this uh, below and uh, set up your email addresses and uh, you're off to the races. So if you wanted to uh, if you wanted to do that up top you would just take this here copy it and paste that there and then you've got the exclude rule for Breslau as well. And just follow that through. Uh, same thing, tone 3 I haven't set anything up here but just follow this rule you can add another department uh, you know you could uh, put in the New Dundee Fire Department here Pretty straightforward. Uh, put in their tone frequencies, email addresses, and just follow this. Uh, follow this straight through for uh, all the uh, all the different departments. If you want to add a department, just uh, you know copy this through, and you can just uh, paste this down and change this to tone six, and then you can add all your uh, all your departments uh, in here. If your department happens happens to use the long tone, which uh, my township uses the long tone for medical pages, then uh, you would do the long tone below. So put in the long tone frequency. Don't have to put any uh, length time because there's only one single tone. The long tone duration is usually eight seconds, so the software is already coded for that. Uh, put in the uh, description of the fire department and email addresses again, and then you're uh, you're all set up for the long tone as well. Follow that through. Uh, uh, as many times as you need below for as many long tones as you uh, may have in your department just like so and uh, once you're done you just want to go up to the top and you just want to click save uh, you want to save it in the same uh, same destination as where it was opened uh, make sure the word wrap is turned off and uh, you should be uh, off to the races with uh, just a little bit uh, more configuration all right, and uh, last but not least, uh, you're going to want to open up the software itself. Um, 
you can do this configuration through the actual config file up here, but uh, I find it easier just to do it through the software itself. It's got a uh, config tab at the top. So we'll fire the software up. Wait for it to load the uh, tone file. It's going to, uh, there we go right there. You can see it loaded all the tones that we had uh, listed in the uh, tone configuration file. So we're going to go to the edit configuration info at the top. And here's got our email information. So um, set up a uh, that free Gmail account, or if you've got another email provider, you can give it a shot. Uh, it's got your uh, email user ID, password, email, server, port. I use Gmail. It works. It's free. All your fire pages will then be archived at uh, gmail.com offsite. It'll all be in the sent folder. So another great way to uh, archive your. Uh, your uh, fire pages. So uh, email address here, the email password will be the exact same password you would use to log into the web-based email. The email server is already done for you, port's done for you. Record in seconds, pretty self-explanatory. If your department's got a real hard time and uh, getting those emails out or getting those fire pages out, you're going to want to uh, set the record time quite high. Like my, my neighboring township, uh, they uh, uh, take a, quite a long time to get the uh, page out. They uh, ramble on with the uh, with the um, their call signs and uh, so on and so forth. And it takes them a good 45 seconds to get the fire page out. Where uh, my actual township that I live in, they get a fire page out in 15-20 seconds. They're really good. They just throw out the meat and potatoes, and here it is. Get going. So 30, uh, you know, 30 seconds or less is sufficient. So you'll have to play with that if you're uh, getting too much dead air at the end of your. Uh, at the end of your attachment, then you know you've got your record time set too long. If you're, uh, it's getting cut off before the actual fire page is uh, being completed, then uh, you need to uh, lengthen that a bit. Record delay is the time from the tones are detected to the time the software actually starts recording. Uh, it's uh, coded at six seconds. I've set mine at three. You guys can play around with that. Uh, if you find that the first part of the page is being uh, is being cut off. You can uh, shorten that if you find there's a lot of dead air at the very beginning of your uh, attachment when you're opening it up. Then you're going to want to lengthen that up a bit. Uh, the tone tolerance, tone offset, I don't think that's something you really need to worry about. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, pretty straightforward and uh, it, uh, it works quite well. So once you're done with all this, you're going to save it and exit it. And if you're configuring it for the very first time, you're going to want to exit and it's still exiting. We'll give it time. There we go. And you're going to want to uh, restart it. And your audio input output device is pretty space forward. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. Sorry. It really sucks when you're trying to record and you can hear yourself in the headphones. Uh, I don't really like it too much. But uh, audio input, uh, says Microsoft Sound Mapper input. If you've already configured your sound card and uh, made the line into the microphone in the default record property, then it should work absolutely fine. But if you've got multiple pieces of software with multiple uh, receivers on one computer, then you're going to need to specify uh, uh, which input and output you're going to use. Uh, for the sake of this recording, I've got three sound cards going. Well, one coming from the scanner, one coming from a headset, and... Uh, the computer one is a piece of crap, um, so uh, you can always uh, signify which uh, which input you're going to use. So that would allow you to use multiple uh, multiple uh, multiple apps uh, or multiple versions of the software on one computer, and you could specify which uh, uh, which pieces uh, which piece of software is going to use uh, which uh, which sound card. So. But if you're just doing one, if you set your default uh, uh, input uh, in the uh, record properties of uh, Microsoft Windows, then uh, it should work just fine uh, just using the Microsoft Sound Mapper input output. And that's pretty much it. The only